So for my last Colorado Trail FKT attempt, I actually decided not to use my favorite La Sportiva shoe, the Mutant, but rather go with another shoe called the Jackal 2. In this video, we're going to talk about why. Stay tuned. So hi, I'm Justin. If you're not familiar with me, I live in Colorado and I love doing long distance mountainous supper fests, usually alone and usually just on my feet or on a bike. And sometimes I share those adventures with you or just talk about the gear that I use. This video is going to be one of the latter. If you like this kind of content, please help support me and the channel by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. All right, let's get to it. So this is the La Sportiva Jackal 2. Uh, came out a couple years ago and there's been uh, I think at least one revision, small revision since then. And this is the shoe I decided to use on my fastest known time attempt on the Colorado Trail. Now there's about six different reasons why I chose this shoe over the La Sportiva Mutant, which is the shoe I primarily use for most any of my long distance FKT attempts. So the first reason is weight. Uh, the Jackal 2 is actually 55 grams lighter in my size than the Mutant. On something like an unsupported 500 mile through hike of the Colorado Trail, every gram counts. So if I can get rid of 55 grams, that's a big win. All right, the second reason is cushion. The Jackal 2 has way more cushion built in to the midsole than the Mutant. And on something like the Colorado Trail, where I'm starting the hike, loaded down with 40 pounds of gear, I was looking for as much cushion underneath my feet as I could. And the Jackal 2 is one of La Sportiva's most cushioned mountain running shoe. Another reason is that the Jackal 2 actually has less drop, less heel drop, than the Mutant. The Mutant actually has 11 millimeters of drop, which in 2023 is actually quite a bit of drop. A lot of shoes these days have zero drop. A lot of shoes in even La Sportiva's line only have six millimeters of drop. Now the Jackal 2 has seven millimeters of drop. I don't recommend going from a high drop shoe like the Mutant to a zero drop shoe overnight. You're going to find that your body, uh, perhaps your calves especially, are just not going to be used to that low of a drop and you're going to have problems. But for me, going from 11 to 7 wasn't that big an issue. One of the reasons why you want to use a shoe with a lower heel drop is that it creates a more stable platform. And for us, that means less risk of getting a sprained ankle. Now, I did suffer a sprained ankle in June or July, and I actually thought it was going to ruin my entire summer. Thankfully, with some aggressive physical therapy, uh, that wasn't the case, and I was able to take on something like the Colorado Trail. And during the Colorado Trail, I just didn't want to get another sprained ankle. The Jackal 2 seemed like a good platform for me to do the FKT attempt on. So the Jackal 2 has a midsole that ranges from 22 millimeters in the toe area to 29 millimeters in the heel. Compare that to the Mutant, which has 16 in the toe area and 26 in the heel. And the midsole formula is a little bit different. The Jekyll 2 is formulated to be a, a bit more cushioned compared to the Mutant. So another big reason why I chose the Jekyll 2 over the Mutant is this shoe has a much wider last. Now the Mutant works really well with my shoe size. It's basically a size D width, which is pretty regular. But on the Colorado Trail, I was worried about two things. Uh, my foot swelling from the 20, 22 hour days hiking under load and also getting my feet wet by going through creek crossings or just going through rainy days. I saw a lot of reports this year of FKT attempts and completions where people were getting trench foot and that's not something that I wanted to endure. So what I did is I packed along a pair of oven plastic bags and some sock liners. So if I needed to, I could create a actual barrier between my feet and the outside elements. 
interesting. So I could hike in muddy and rainy situations without my feet getting super, super wet and gnarly. I didn't find those uh, conditions, thank goodness. So I can't tell you how well that worked, but that was the plan. So if you're interested in the specs of many of the La Sportiva mountain running shoes available, I have made a small Google Sheet that compares all these specs for you. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. I'll pop it up on the screen right now if you want to check it out and see what your favorite shoes are spec-wise compared to other shoes in the mountain running collection. So another very, very rough way to compare lasts of different shoes is actually just to take the insole out and then kind of align them together and see which one overlaps the other. So I just took out the insole to the Jackal 2 and you can find a pair of mutants like these, the ones I used actually for the Sangre de Cristo range traverse. Boom. And you can just over, you know, place one against the other and see which one overlaps the other. So let's do that. So in my example, I do see that the Jackal has a little couple millimeters overlap over the Mutin. I know that La Sportiva mountain running shoes do have a reputation of being narrow. I haven't found that to be really the case. Again, I have a D width foot, which is fairly regular. There are some models of La Sportiva mountain running shoes that do run narrow. So of all the mountain running shoes La Sportiva creates, I don't use the Bushio 2 unfortunately because I just can't fit into it. It's too narrow for me. Everything else I, I haven't had a problem with, honestly. So just like drop, if width is something that you're worried about when trying a La Sportiva shoe, uh, maybe give it another try. Maybe you'll be surprised. So a big reason why I chose the Jackal 2 over the Mutant is that the Jackal 2's outsole is more durable and less grippy. Now, the, one of the reasons why I love the Mutant is because of that outsole. It's, it's very grippy. If I wanted a grippier outsole, I'd have to go for something like an approach shoe. But with the Mutant, I can usually get by with the outsole that it provides when doing something up to low fit. Like uh, the cruxes of the Sangre de Cristo Traverse go at like 5'4", and I was comfortable with my skill set to climb those with a heavy pack. But on the Colorado Trail, I'm not going to need that kind of sticky rubber because the trail is, you know, it's just a trail. It's not um, off-trail talus hopping, scrambling, so that wasn't needed. What I could look for though is an outsole that just lasts longer. And that's something actually that I needed, and I need that because the trail is 500 miles long. Uh, the Sangre de Cristo Traverse in comparison is something like 120 miles long, so I didn't need uh, ultimate durability, but I really wanted sneakiness. So of course I still have the shoes I use for the Sangre de Cristo Traverse, as well as my attempt on the Colorado Trail, and we compare the outsoles and see how much wear I put on them. So if I'm not mistaken, okay, so these, this is the pair I used on the Colorado Trail, and you can see that the Jackal 2 it has little wear at all. Here is the one I used on the Colorado Trail, and here's a brand new pair I probably was walking the dog in. And there is wear on the Colorado Trail pair, because I did do 100 mile, 90 miles. But it looks relatively new, so that's looking good. So let's compare that to a pair of mutants that are new, and a pair of mutants that I used for the Sangre de Cristo Range Traverse. So here's a new pair, and you can see those giant lugs look nice and new. And this is after six and a half days on the Sangre de Cristo Traverse. You can see those lugs have really, really ground down. And that's basically because of two things. Uh, one is the nature of the terrain on the route, right? The Sangres are just going to be more abrasive because you're on talus all the time. Instead of a trail, you're climbing, you're scrambling. And secondly, just the rubber itself, right? It's just a different formula that because it's stickier, it's going to be softer and thus it's not going to last as long. So we can also compare them with each other. So again, this is the pair of Jekyll 2s I used on the Colorado Trail for about 190 miles. And this is the pair of Mutant I use on the Sangre de Cristo Range Traverse for about 120 miles. And you can definitely see that there's a lot more wear on the Mutants. Those are the types of compromises that a different pair of shoes will give you. Uh, just like, you know, the width of the shoe, Mutant's a little bit narrower, and that is going to give me a little bit more precision on those scrambly and semi-technical pitches. Okay, and lastly, a big reason why I chose the Jackal 2 over the Mutant is that the upper is much more ventilated. 
Again, I was worried about getting into rainy conditions, going through creek crossings, and wanting my shoes to dry out as quickly as possible. Now, the Mutant has a very, very comfortable upper lined with a nice fabric, but that fabric does absorb things like water and does take a longer time to dry out. Now, the Jackal 2, on the other hand, has a very thin upper that's made of this kind of mesh material that's welded to a rubberized plastic. And it's going to dry out a lot faster because there's less fabric that's going to absorb water. Most of the fabric that's going to absorb water is going to be in the heel. But everything from here down is that mesh rubberized layered material. And I bet you could even see through it. Let's try. Yep. See how you can see my face through the upper of the Jackal 2. That's really what I want. So if I want more padding on the upper of my shoe, well, that's what a sock is for. And I used primarily a, a hiking sock, a mid-weight hiking sock, and that works really well. Now, if that hiking sock gets wet, I can always take it off and put a different pair on. I brought three pairs of socks in total, and then I can let that wet pair of socks dry out naturally, either overnight or while hiking, and then put it back on. So yeah, I think those characteristics that I just outlined about the Jackal 2 really makes this a great backpacking through hiking shoe. If you're familiar with La Sportiva's mountain running line, I wear the same size as I do with the Mutant and all the other mountain running shoes that La Sportiva puts out. If you're new to La Sportiva, I suggest either trying them in store or sizing up at least one European size to get the right fit. One of the reasons why people think that La Sportiva shoes run narrow is that they just get a smaller shoe than they need. So what do you think? Do you think the Jekyll 2 makes a good through hiking backpacking shoe? Comment your comments in the comments. That's it for this video. Unfortunately I did not uh, finish the Colorado Trail. I experienced very very painful IT band issues and it just slowed me down so much that I couldn't make up the time. It was super depilating so I had to cut it loose before Salida. Um, I had a wonderful time on the trail. I don't know if I'm going to revisit it anytime soon. I think what I really love is high mountains, crumbly cliffs, <laughs> amazing ridge traverses, and a lot of air below my ass, which you don't get much on the Colorado Trail, unfortunately. But, you know, it is a very wonderful trail, and I'm, I'm happy that it exists. I'm not sure what my next project is going to be, but until then, long may you reach.